So Bandai has just hit us with a one-two punch of brand new announcements, courtesy of the online new hobby Info and the Hyper Plamo Fest 2024. Now we've got a ton of new announcements that isn't limited to, but includes the brand new Armored Core 30 Minute Missions kits, the brand new high grade kit of the somewhat polarizing new Gundam design from the Netflix show, the eagerly awaited announcement of the massive Gundam, or should I say Psycho Gundam Mark II, and of course, a brand new 2.0 real grade of the Granddaddy or X78 II, looking to be absolutely spectacular. That isn't all, so I'm gonna split this into what was announced at the online new hobby info and then onto what was seen at the Hyper Plamo Fest. But before I actually get into anything at all, I will mention if you do want any of these things that you're going to be seeing in this video, you can get them through the channel sponsor, Hobby Link Japan. Now these are up right now in that link in the description. These are available for pre-order and I recommend pre-ordering soon, soon, soon because supplies are always super, super, super limited. If you actually get in the first wave and pick some good shipping, you'll probably have them within one week of release. That's what I like. But yeah, if you do want any of this stuff, link is down there in the description, Hobby Link Japan. Now let's jump right into it. So jumping right on into the hobby new item info, these are the announcements we would have got online. All of this information is from the Bandai Hobby site itself and they've laid it out absolutely perfectly so we can check out everything one at a time. Now I'll give some time to what's interesting and everything else I'll just give a bit of a blurb about, make it quite snappy. Anyway, starting right into it with the Gunpla and these are the announcements. Of course the biggest one right there being the first one being the Oryx MTA2 real grade version 2.0, we've got some build divers announcements and some Gundam Seed Freedom announcements. First up right here, and this is the biggest deal of them all. This is the version 2.0 of the real grade Oryx 782. Now, just in case you don't know, the original Oryx 782 real grade kit had what I refer to as ERS, early real grade syndrome. Basically had a pre-molded inner frame there's an image right here just off of Twitter that actually has what the old frame looked like compared to the new one, as well as the Gundam itself compared to the, well, original real grade. And you can see it's come quite some way. But mainly all of the parts of the original real grade came molded on a runner out of this kind of rubbery style plastic that was from an engineering perspective quite cool the way they actually did it, but it got floppy over time and it wasn't the greatest kit. Since then, Real grade kits have become like mini master grades. You build up everything inside of it, the ridiculously detailed and definitely the most detailed over the top Gundam model kits of them all. So it is about time we saw the Oryx 78 get that full mini master grade treatment. Now there is a whole bunch of information about it right here. It says a lot of stuff like where it's like semi monocoque, which in case you don't know what that means, this has a brand new style of internal frame. I don't know if that means compared to the original real grade or does it mean compared to real grades in general. Monocoque is a type of design where it doesn't have a frame holding it together that the external structure on something like a plane is actually what holds it together. Semi monocoque is when it's like that with some parts inside holding that together. So what that means in regard to this, well, who knows just yet, but it does look fantastic. Partly the joints have been redesigned in a way that they do look like actual parts, that this will actually bend its joints, you won't see anything that looks like the assembly, and it will still maintain a human style to its posing while posing it. So it's a mix of mechanical and anatomical at the same time. Apparently every single aspect of this has been molded in color and as you can see from the look of this we've got some nice parts coming through the surface, the color separation includes the white and light gray and apparently we will be getting everything including the ducks on the cheeks, the eye cameras, all of that should be fully color separated. It also says here about the exterior design combines the latest interpretation of the RX-78 II. As you can see from its overall design, this is a chonky boy, quite similar but a little chonkier than the Perfect Grade Unleashed, and it almost has a Gundam Mark II element to it. Flashback to that image I did show earlier on of what the older real grade looked like compared to this one. The older one is definitely more like the OG RX-78 II. This is a bit more of a modern design. So instead of rehashing it entirely, they've made a little bit of a different interpretation of the classic OG Gundam. One of the coolest aspects about this is the core fighter can be fully transformed. A tiny 144th scale fully transforming core fighter. It's got 
a lot going on in it as well, including a full ab crunch. And this is a real great kit with a fully opening cockpit. Pretty awesome. When it comes to the equipment in here, you get a lot of beam rifle, beam saber, shield, hyper bazooka, landing gears for using with the core fighter, hand parts, and decals. So overall, this is looking to be quite impressive. Over the top exterior looks, that mini master grade build, this is something I cannot wait to check out. This is going to cost 3,850 yen, which at the current exchange rate is $25, which is incredible. And that, uh, well, it's coming out in August. Can't wait. So next up is this right here. This is the high grade 144th scale Gundam Amazing Barbatos Lupus. And like it kind of suggests, this is the amazing version of the Barbatos Lupus, AKA what we would have seen in Gundam build metaverse, if I'm not mistaken. Compared to what we just saw, this is definitely kind of basic. It's your standard sort of build divers, build fighters kind of release. It's a color variant of the Gundam Barbatos with a bunch of extra stuff that we would have seen in Metaverse. Just like you're seeing right here, it's basically just a retooled, slightly different variant of Gundam Barbatos Lupus with a brand new backpack that seems to be mainly made out of a whole bunch of joints. Those joints, of course, allow it to transform into various different forms, including the backpack, its own flight form, and this kind of crossbow type majigger right here. This will be out in July, costing around $18. Next up then is the high grade Gundam Double O Command with uh, the desert type colors. So this is pretty much what we would have seen before. This is of course from Gundam Metaverse. This is just a color variant of a kit we would have seen before, which was the Double O Command. And this time it's in desert colors. There really isn't a whole lot to say. It is definitely a very nice looking Gundam. It's got the Command Gundam kind of feel while not being the Command Gundam. It rocks those cool armored military kind of looks with a nice array of weapons, but besides that, it's something that we would have seen before. This will cost you just under $15 and is out in July. Next up, we've got some new Gundam Seed Freedom announcements. First up is this right here. The combination of the Jewel and the Blitz Gundam. This, of course, is the high-grade Jewel Blitz Gundam. Definitely looking a little bit more like the Jewel Gundam than the Blitz Gundam, but definitely pretty cool looking. According to the blurb right here, this has the Seed Action System, which is the exact same sort of internal set of joints that we would have seen with the last few Freedom releases. That means it will be compatible with the Rising Freedom, Immortal Justice, etc. And will be incredibly poseable and incredibly, well, rock solid. Seems like we're going to be seeing the same hip joints that slide up and down that we would have seen with those particular kits. This does come with the Assault Shroud, which means this might be a kit you might be wanting to buy two of. One to show the actual dual blitz without the Assault Shroud and with it, because it looks great with both. This comes with a whole bunch of weapons. And honestly, I'm just looking at the katakana of these right here and I'm seeing like Grape Neal and Grape Neal. So I'm not necessarily sure. Lancer darts? But yeah, you can see from the images there that it looks like it's going to have a whole bunch of cool stuff and I cannot wait, especially that Blitz style claw. This will cost about $19 and this is also out this coming July. Next up and in the exact same vein as what we just spoke about is the high grade Lightning Buster Gundam. It is really cool to see the older designs from the OG Seed getting a kind of redesign for the Seed Freedom movie. So this of course is based on the Buster Gundam. This is the Lightning Buster Gundam. And once again, we have a bit of a blurb here that mentions it's got that exact same Seed action system. So that means it will be compatible with everything we've seen so far from the movie and will be rock solid and super poseable. It says the same thing about the hips here so they can drop up and down to get more poses out of it. We've got some large cannons. They can be deployed from a folded state and apparently because of the particular articulation inside of this, it will be easy to position with said cannons. It says something here about the warhead of the missiles. I'm assuming that's the missile pods on the backpack they can open up. And apparently it's saying it's got full color coding. And I guess that means good color separation. So we will see. It's got a whole bunch of awesome looking stuff. And this also will cost you about $19. And this is coming out in September. So again, looking pretty cool. I can't get enough of the Buster Gundam. Love the design, love the colors. <laughs> Lastly then is this right here. This is an SD cross silhouette version of the Mighty Strike Freedom Gundam. So in case you don't know, the cross silhouette SDs are kind of like the mid-tier SDs. They're not as basic as the standard ones. They have a bit of an inner frame, 
you can have a mini one or a medium sized one, but they're still quite basic. Not up there with the likes of the Master Grade SD Freedom Gundam we would have seen recently. Does say the two frames are included, that is the CS smaller one, actually that's the bigger one, and the smaller classic SD one. As usual, you can choose what kind of eyes, the cartini ones or the kind of Gundam-y ones. And apparently you can replicate its flight poses with its wings. And you do have your two swords in here, but I'm not sure how the color accuracy will be on a kit like this. There's not really a whole lot to say about it. This thing is worth mentioning. It does say you can actually use the beam shield off the high grade, so it means it has no beam shield of its own, but it is an option if you do want both. And this will cost you about $13, and this is out in September. All right, so we're going to be moving down the list a little bit on the hobby side. And next up is we get a new figurized standard of a Gundam pilot. Odd enough, it seems like a strange-ish choice. This is from Gundam Sea Destiny, and this is Luna Maria Hawk. So all I can say is I am definitely happy they're going to make more pilot figures as model kits as part of the figurized standard line. It is a great line of model kits. What we've seen so far are fantastic. I'm not sure where their choices are going to go. It seems a little random at this point, but this normal suit and helmet combination looks absolutely ridiculous in a good way, and I hope they expand on it. Anyway, as for the blurb, it says from Mobile Suit Gundam Sea Destiny, it's Luna Maria Hawk. When it comes to the expressions, we do have one printed face, I think it says, and two types that you can use water slide decals to make your own. That's what it looks like it says anyway. You do have a helmet in here. It seems like the visor can be removed. There's a choice of different body parts. We have an alternate torso that does have soft parts and multiple hands are included. So yeah, overall, it looks pretty damn good. This is something like I mentioned already, I hope they do keep up. And if you are planning to get one, it'll cost you $27, and it is out this July. So moving down the list some more, and we do have some option sets being released. As far as I can see from these, these are option sets that did come out before from various Gundam Build Fighters shows, and some of the older Iron-Blooded Orphans options. This is pretty cool that they're actually re-releasing them once again, but there really isn't much of a reason to go into it too much. As for what is being released, we have the Build Fighters... Option set 5, which has the universe booster. Option set 6, I think it says the variable pod. Option set 7, which is the powered arms powered. Option set 8, the Borodin armed arms. Option set 9, which is the giant gatling. Option set 10, the galaxy booster. Option set 11, which is a bunch of weaponry, including the smooth bore gun for the Gundam Barbato, so these are Iron-Blooded Orphans parts, including a mobile worker, and option set 12, which is the large railgun. There's a whole bunch of other stuff, including some Flauros weapons, as well as some widespread hands. But yeah, that's pretty much it for those option sets. Next up, we do have some 30-minute missions announcements, some fairly cool, some absolutely ridiculous, so let's get to the pretty cool first. So we have a new standard X-Max announced, and that right here is the Verde Nova in green. There's a bit of an overview image of what it will look like complete, and it looks ridiculous. This almost has the kind of prototype feeling, or should I say a Sinanju prototype feeling. It's got the kind of shoulders, the head, the legs. They knew exactly what they were doing over at Bandai. This looks absolutely phenomenal. There's a view of it from the back. The detailing is very, very nice for a 30-minute missions. we got some vents in the back of the legs. Backpack looking great. I love those stabilizer things on the back of the feet. And when it comes to some options in here, there are some head options. These are all made up out of a combination of these parts right here. So we've got a standard head with a mono eye, a commander looking head with a mono eye, as well as a two eyed head with one of those commander fins up top. So three different heads in the one pack, depending on the combination of build. There's the backpack. This can be, I'm guessing, posed separately because it does look like it can fly around its own like a standard unit. What I think I'm seeing right there in the front is what is in the chest of the actual Verdanova. Options on the directions, the weapons point. There is what it looks like attached into the back. No images of what the Verdanova looks like without the nose of this particular unit sticking out of its chest. It looks like you're able to get those guns in under the arms like this, like some kind of a striker pack. There are some optional attachment points for using this particular backpack. That is two different backpack attachments. So it does mean you can use it with various other kits that are out there, like what you're seeing right now. 
and there's the full spread of everything that comes inside of this. So it does look like you're able to build both heads at once instead of really having to kind of choose the parts that you want to put together. We also get widespread hands so these things come fully loaded. And that is what makes the price of these blow my mind. This will cost you $12 only and this is out in July. As is usually the case, there is a second color available. That is the Verdinova Navy. Absolutely everything I said about the last one applies here. It does look like a variant of Sinanju. We've got a nice clear piece in the nose on the chest there. You can build the variants of the head this time just in that blue and navy color scheme. Completely compatible. Backpack can do exactly what the backpack could do on the green version. Backpack compatibility exactly the same. The gray fits so well with the white parts so you'll be able to make your own kind of different jets and flight forms using this backpack. There is the spread of what's in here. Again, incredible. And all for that low, low price of $12 once again. This version is not out in July. This one is out in August. Lastly, then, we do have a weapon set coming out in August as well. This costs about $7. It's super cheap. And this contains a backpack, a round shield, a rifle with a bit of an ammo belt, and what it says there, a radome. And there's a bit of an image giving an idea of what you can do with this. I love that backpack. It's giving me real Zeta Gundam kind of vibes, real 80s Gundam vibes. Usually when an option kit comes out, it's for using with the latest release being the Verdinova, but it seems like this can be used with whatever you want. That is quite the shield and quite the rifle. Looking pretty cool. Again, about $7 out in August, the same time as the Navy version of the Verdinova. But when we're talking 30 minute missions, this is what I want to talk about. It is the Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon kits. These look incredible, like absolutely ridiculous. Before I actually mention these, or should I say, go in to take a look at these. This is what was on at the Hyper Plamo Fest. It is jumping ahead a little bit, but just look at these prototypes. They look huge. I know they're not. I saw an image, if I can find it again, I'll pop it up, of what one of these is like beside a Portanova, which is a little bit smaller than an Oryx 78 2 So they are in and around Gundam-ish size, maybe a bit bigger. I know in universe, these are meant to be fairly small mecha, but at the end of the day, it does depend on what they look like on your shelf. And these look like they'll be a decent size. Those prototypes looking absolutely awesome. But anyway, the first one in here, this is Nightfall. So let's take a look at the blurb about this. I am so like ridiculously excited for these. Anyway, it says Armor Core Fires of Rubicon. 30 minute mission series. Under the key concepts of simple assembly and custom play, the impressive AC Nightfall appeared driven by Raven. So yes, if these are the same kind of assembly and modular kind of builds that we will be seeing with, uh, or that we do see with 30 minute missions, these will be incredible. It says there's a common structure across the series. So it does mean the head, the core, the arms, the legs can be assembled in whatever way you want with the rest of the line. So much fun. It does say for the installation of some of the parts like shoulder weapons and some of the hand weapons, three millimeter joints are used, which is the usual 30 minute minutes kind of thing. So it means you can use 30 minute minutes stuff with this. It does mention the different weapons that it comes with and an alternate head part for the assault boost. Overall, this does look incredible. I'm so blown away. We come with four weapons per each one, it seems. So you're gonna get two shoulder weapons, two arm weapons. This one's got the pile bunker. The promo images do show what weapons it comes with. So you got yourself a Scudder, Ashmead, and the Songbirds and the uh, P32 Duo 03 for up on the shoulders. It does show that there is three millimeter joints in this, but as you can see, they don't stand out too much. They're not as over the top as what you see in a standard 30 minute missions kit. They're kind of hidden away quite nicely. So it's not pockmarked like Swiss cheese. There's another look at the alternate parts that are in here. So I am so impressed. And finally, there is the picture of what it'd be like side by side with a standard 30 minute missions kit. So this looks like it's going to be standing around the same height as a high grade Gundam kit. Even though they're not the same scale, they will be around the same height. So excited. And down to the serious business about this. This costs $25. That is not bad at all. $25 and it is out in September. Super, super excited. Next one. And that, of course, is Steel Haze. Now, I'm even more excited about this one. Of course, it does play, well, I, would you say a bigger role in the game than the other one? Than the Raven one? The Nightfall? Maybe. I guess you interact with it more. So pretty much the exact same things is said right here. 30 minute missions, Armored Core 5, uh, 5, 6, 
fires a Rubicon, same concept, simple assembly, custom play, common structure across them all, it's pretty much the same thing, it doesn't say anything different than the other variant. There's the image we have of it so far, it looks ridiculously good. I wondered how 30 minute mission stuff would work with the slender aspects of the armored core mecha, but it's working super super well. When it comes to the articulation as well, it looks like it could be good. Still a little bit hard to tell, but Bandai have done a great job here. The color separation looks great. Looks like we've standard 30 minute missions hands, so it does mean it will be able to hold on to the stuff you wanted to hold on to. There's the parts, so of course the head, body, arms, legs, backpack. All of that will be usable with other kits. There is the size, it's 13.5 millimeters, so that's pretty much the same as the high grade Gundam. There it is in a little bit of a pose. Hard to tell yet what it will be like, but that looks accurate. It's not like they do yoga in armored core when it comes to that double melee weapon right there we've got the effect parts and everything that just looks so so good we have a folded version and not folded version it's hard to tell yet does it actually seem simultaneously i mean seamlessly open and close but only time will tell there is the shoulder weapons again looking incredible swappable between this and the nightfall once again, it's mentioning the 3mm joints, they're on the hand and on the backpack right there. Almost invisible on this design. So any worries you may have had that it'll be covered in little holes like the usual 30 minute missions kits, that is not the case. There is its full loadout, so it actually seems like there is no actual seamless transformation between it. So you choose the parts you want to use for that particular melee weapon and just look at that. It looks incredible. I know this is a CG image, I think it says up there in the top, but usually they're exactly the same as what you're seeing right here when they are released. Great panel lines too. Again, this is just $25 and out in September. So for $50, you can get both of these Armored Core kits, which is an absolute steal. Cannot, cannot wait to see them. All right, from here on out, there is just some more information on the 30 minute missions kits. There's some 30 minute sisters releases. So there's six of those, some body parts. What looks like one new full release, which is this one right here, the Euphia, I think it says. Looks like we've got another tie in body down there on the right. We've got a brand new 30 minute missions line, which is 30 minute fantasy. So it seems like to some degree, Bandai with 30 minute missions has gone full from software. It's not necessarily a Dark Souls kit, but it's getting quite close. Hit that with some chrome paint, that'll damage it up. It looks like it could have walked right out of Souls. Besides the big blue bit in its chest there, letting you know it's a straight up mech. So even though these are fantasy, that is the body inside of it. So it is definitely a, well, robot. It does say it is this silhouette. And I mean, come on, come on. They're definitely serving up the Souls. There is two variants. There's a dark one as well. That's this one right here. And one of these guys right here will cost you just upwards of $14, so not too bad. The silver one is out in August, that one right here. And the black one, that is out in September. There are some sold separate armor sets that you can slap onto them, just like you're seeing right here, which will change the overall look. There is a variant for using on the silver version. Definitely getting a lot more uh, anime fantasy right here. And there are going to be four of those optional armor sets. Now, these will require the full body. And there's also an option set coming out as well, which comes with two chests, one of which is crystal. And overall, there's... Ch Again, 30 Minute Missions is becoming one, or the 30 Minute Missions in general lines are coming some of the coolest model kits of all time. Love them. The next couple of things is just some customized material. So these are just some plates and stuff for slapping onto your Bandai kits. And we do have some new upcoming action bases being the Action Base 6 and the Action Base 7. These are more like a standard style anime figure stand for using with your various mecha kits like all of the ones we just saw. And that is it for what was announced at the hobby new item. But that is not all that happened. We also had Hyper Plamo Fest. Now all the announcements for that were over on Twitter. So let's move on over there. All right, so everything we're about to talk about are from Bandai Spirits themselves over on Twitter. Now, first off, there is this right here, also known as Gundam EX. This is the main Gundam from the upcoming Netflix, I'm not sure if it's a movie, I think it's just a one-off movie, called Requiem for Vengeance. Now, this is definitely polarizing. This has divided opinions quite a bit. This is... An unusual Gundam design without a doubt. It's very busy, very unique, but I have to say I am definitely digging it. It looks ridiculous in kind of all the right ways. Now, there really isn't too much information about this right here. There's a lot going on in the design. It's uh, definitely got some Western influences in it. 
It's not as simple or as stylish as a standard Gundam. A lot going on in its design. And we also have this right here, which it says is the Zaku 2 Sora Reuse, I think it says. Uh, so yeah, it's a big buff Zaku. It hasn't as gotten as much of an over design as we see on the Gundam, the Gundam EX with its easy 8 kind of vibes. This is just big and buff and ridiculous. Now, this looks like it has been battle damaged to some degree, given a bit of a wash. But a few days ago, Bandai did post these images here. These are the CG ones. So it does say it's coming out in autumn 2024, but we do not have any release dates just yet. There's the CG version of this particular Gundam. It looks a little less busy without, of all, well, without all of the goo on it that they added on. There is an image from the back, and honestly, this is growing on me. I already liked it, but it's growing on me more and more and more. I can never really tell how I feel about a particular kit until I've built it, or should I say about a design of a Gundam or a Mecha until I've built it. You get a little bit more personal with them then, you can see what you like and don't like, but so far, I'm interested. There is the Zaku looking incredibly jacked. That is one big Zaku with antenna. But overall, the general Zaku design is still intact inside of it. We've got a lot of, we've got a lot of nice detail inside the shoulder shield. And there is it from the back. So a lot of pipes, a lot of parts. But overall, still definitely is Zaku 2 through and through. Again, no release date or price just yet. So I'm just going through these now in order of, well, how excited I am about them. And next up is this right here. This is the High Grade Psycho Gundam Mark II. We knew this was coming. Basically, the arms of this did come included with the Hazel Giant Arms, which I would have done a review of, so we saw what those arms are like. They were quite nice. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. It was on the Gundam Typhus Chimera. My mistake. Wrong arms. Those arms were a 1.5 of the standard Psycho Gundam, which still might happen. Otherwise, this looks absolutely ridiculous. It will be massive. Again, we don't have any price or release date just yet. Announced at the exact same time in the exact same tweet as the Psycho Gunna Mark II is this right here. Now, I'm just going to like outright say it straight off the bat. I have never gotten past episode 2 or 3 of Gundam Zeta. So it's something I need to sit down to do someday. So I know absolutely nothing about this. So I, there's nothing for me to really say. Except this is such an atypical Gundam release. When it comes to high grades, they usually play on the side of safety. This is ridiculously over the top and weird looking in all the right sort of ways. And I'm super excited. This is the sort of model kit that can get me right into a series. Just because it is so off the wall looking. I appreciate a really weird retro design, especially when it's made to modern standards. So I'm looking forward to this, even though I've never seen it in action. Again, when it comes to both of those, no prices and no release dates just yet. So I'm guessing after September, maybe October or November, seeing as they're kind of announcing the dates on the ones that are coming out between now and August already. Not really much else from the actual Hyper Plamo Fest. We are getting this right here. This is an AOZ reboot version of the High Zack Custom. Or should I say it's the High Zack Custom from Advance of Zeta Reboot. The Advance of Zeta Reboot kits are fantastic. I assume this will be two, but they are usually and are always premium Bandai. So this will be two. As far as I can see, there isn't really any information just yet on when this kit is going to be released or the price. Yeah, nothing yet. The Hyper Plamo Fest really seems to be pushing Gundam Zeta quite a bit. So from Gundam Double Zeta, we are getting a figure rise standard Puru 2. So that is the second female character figurized standard that has been announced over the last couple of days. Again, no release, no price, but that's what it looks like. But yeah, that is it. I think I've covered everything that's been announced over the last few days. As usual, when it comes to these new announcements, drop it down there in the comments. What are you the most excited about? What are you, what is a must buy from what has been announced for you? Drop it down there. For me, again, it has to be that real grade Oryx 78 2 version 2. That's Psycho Gundam Mark II. I'm totally interested in these new Requiem for a Vengeance high-grade kits. I love a new take on the classics. And I'm super excited about this Seed Freedom releases too. Oh god, I almost forgot. More than anything, it's those Armored Core kits. The 30-minute missions ones. Those I will be counting the days for. Anyway, if you do want your own... The pre-orders have gone live on Hobby Link. Link is down there in the description so you can grab yours now to make sure you secure your get. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gundam and Mecha news and reviews. And I'll see you next time. 
as always, this video right here would not have been possible without each and every single one of you guys. So thank you so, so much for watching. And as usual, special thanks to those of you who helped me out over on the channel memberships right here and on Patreon, including Abraxas, Caleb Engelhart, Dashiell Marmion, Go Little Rockstar, Joe, or G59061, 10 Soldier YT, and Van Fawn.